The question that I've been looking at is whether inequality and mortality has been going up or down more generally in the United States and in other countries. We know that poor people are more likely to die than richer people. So it makes sense, I think, to people to think that if you have increases in economic inequality, that you will have increases in health inequality. And what that means is that you will have increases in mortality of poor people relative to rich people. My contribution has been to look at the whole life cycle and show that actually, even though we have increases in economic inequality for children, we see decreases in inequality and mortality. In other words, poor children are becoming less likely to die relative to rich children than they were 20 years ago. We look at people who are in the poorest counties of the United States compared to people who are in the richest counties. Inequality and mortality for people 55 and older has been increasing, but for infants, children, and young adults, inequality and mortality has been decreasing. One reason for the, the uh, sort of disconnect between inequality in income and inequality in mortality is that for somebody who's 60 years old, their health is affected by their whole life. So when we look at people who are age 60 and inequality and mortality at age 60, that's probably reflecting things that happened to them 50 years ago. The measures of inequality that we use are typically based on people's income. So that's just the income that comes in and it doesn't include any of the public support that they get. So for people at the bottom of the income distribution who are getting a lot of public support, that can actually be an important thing to leave out. The thing that I take away is that public policy does matter, that we can make a difference, that if you think about swimming upstream against a rising tide of inequality, we can actually do that by programs that support people's health.